Okay, here we are for uh, another sculpture forum. This one about Sidney Schrader's show at um, Gantt Media, uh, a gallery in Astoria, Queens, uh, Queens, New York. I'm Jock Ireland. I'm not uh, Garth Evans. Garth was uh, tried, but was unable to make it to the show. But uh, Brant and I uh, did get out there. Brant Junso is here with me, too. And uh, Rachel Bolander is uh, taking care of all the uh, technical things behind these uh, behind these forums. Uh, a lot of the work that is in this show, um, uh, the show has closed, incidentally, but a lot of the work that was in the show uh, was made at the studio school where uh, Brant and I uh, do this thing called teaching. Uh, and so in the spirit of full disclosure, maybe you, you know, viewers uh, can trust what we're saying. Maybe they can't trust. I hope uh, that won't really be an issue. But just before we leave it, I thought I would mention that um, that I remember in a class, uh, Sydney, uh, or in a class, I mentioned uh, the seventh cervical casually to uh, one or another or many other students in the in the class and Sydney asked me uh what's the seventh cervical and so I had an occasion to explain the seventh cervical a vertebrae a vertebra that is um, a kind of marker for the bottom of the neck and uh so I I can say that I taught her what the seventh cervical is but I certainly can't say I taught her how to make the sculpture that, that is in this show. Uh, a lot of good and, seventh cervicals in the show, John. Oh, well, right. <laughs> uh, it, I, but the thing is, I, I just watched it fall out of her hands. It, it, and I watched it in amazement. Uh, uh, and, uh, and yet I feel there's some sense uh, in, in which school uh, being, working with other people uh, did play a part in, uh, in, in the making of this work. Uh, and Sydney acknowledges it to some degree uh, in the title of the show, uh, which includes my name and, uh, Wei Jin, another studio school uh, guy, and and Mark, the dealer, uh, and, and but she acknowledges it in, a, in in the sort of mysterious way that other people play in the uh, the, the role that other people play in the uh, making of art, and uh, well, I. <laughs> Brant, what do you think of all of this? Do you feel you taught her anything, or what was um, the role of teaching of school? Well, uh, she was in a class of mine for uh, for two weeks, uh, but uh, I, uh, only two weeks. But um, visiting the show, I really I had no thought about school or or uh, where this artist had gone to school um i really zeroed in on the objects and the kind of highest praise uh i didn't really give a thought about the artist herself i was like uh artist to artist looking for what i could use and there was a lot there um if there are a lot of objects. It's, I don't know the list, let's say 30, 40 things, um, each on a pedestal, which is really impressive. Um, it had the effect of being almost skylit. Um, 
And most of them were small and almost casual. And I thought that a lot of them were really terrific sculptural, sculptural ideas. And I mean that in like the, the, the essence of a sculptural idea, something that's three-dimensional and plastic and that's structural and emotional at the same time. Um, I was more interested in the smaller pieces than the bigger, but that, you know, maybe that's about me at that moment and what I found I could employ readily. Um, you know, overall, it was a really impressive experience. And uh, I'm glad we went. Yeah, but it, you, it, it's, I, I'm certainly with you and, uh, and, um, it, well, I, I guess I might fuss over the word impressive. I, I'm, um, I, I don't think there's any, the sort of modesty of the show, the lack of intent to impress, uh, was striking to me. Uh, and, and just to bring the school business back into it, it there was a lot of work in clay and, and you don't see sh sh a lot of clay work uh, or particularly clay figures. It's sort of a, uh, you know, academic school thing. And yet, this there was nothing academic or school about it. it it's there's that's really true uh, a, a paradox or something going on. It, it's um, and and it you know it clay has been used for thousands of years, but this work was fresh. I, you know, just I, I, as if I'd never seen anything like it. But I think, Jock, there's no paradox there. This was, uh, you know, this is just the way things ought to be. The, well, the, sure, the sure. and the immediacy of her contact with that material, which I didn't think to mention, because to me, uh, clay is just sort of a, like, it's like, a, it's like the stuff that the mind mocks up its notions with. It's almost like, almost something I wouldn't bother to mention because it seems almost, uh, you know, default mode thinking. Well, well default mode for you, maybe. Uh, uh, but, well, I I don't see a lot of, uh, uh, of uh, shows with, that focus on, on the figure, on clay, or, or the figure made with clay, um, mm. um, and, and I mean, uh, you know, do you? I, it's, well, you know, that's a that's an interesting uh, aspect of the show. It was relentlessly figurative. I mean, even like the piece that is on the screen at the moment, uh, it looks like almost like a figure broken up and and uh, jammed together, almost a random um but even the pieces that seemed most unlikely were at bottom some kind of some kind of human being and the, the poses it was, it was really kind of crazy because some of the poses were you know almost uh like you know obvious to almost Try, you know, poses that a, an older artist probably wouldn't get involved with, but the handling is so powerful. Um, and the, the kind of, uh, you know, jamming together of these lumps and gobs of material, um, not thoughtlessly, but, um, you know, with for me, this, this, this impressive, uh, quickness, it's like need to see something. Uh-huh, and, and can you um, sort of go further about what it is um, that is 
sort of being seen that is coming out of well, the client? Well, that's a darn good question because you kind of become aware of this artist, uh, you know, in the in her impulses and um, her, her kind of manual way with things, um, you know, certain uh, certain favorites among ways of sticking things together or, you know, gouging out here and there, some kind of a, you know, a, a solid void thing she has that, that you, you see happening over the course of all the objects. But in terms of themes, that's that's harder to figure out. Um, I don't have a grip on that. I mean, it, to some extent, as far as theme and subject, I saw what I wanted to see. Uh, which was something at a really like a you know, like a very basic level where mechanical form and impulse are the same thing. The very basic, but but still uh, something that I haven't named in my own head. But then there's the figure. I mean, every one of those things is somehow a figure. There is a driving uh uh theme if you like or something that is unclear to me but uh even though it's unclear it's um it's there it's it's very real it, uh these are not sort of formal exercises they're driven by uh, a, a, a particular uh, take on the world, on life, on uh, on what it is to be a human being. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. There's something inherent in her life and experience that's that's coming out of this, you know, kind of. Uh, bubbling stream of things one one's aware of that being there and i and i think one's more aware of it in the larger pieces which i didn't look at as hard the the small ones were newer to me uh huh it, it's uh yeah and and and, and they just, i would say they both the small ones and the big ones sustain um uh, your your interest there's a complexity to them that um that is just you know really engaging uh and can't be reduced or it, certainly i can't reduce it to a sort of 25 words or less statement but um I I'm, I started to read um, uh, Gogol's book, The Dead Souls, mm -hmm. and, and I I I'm in chapter three or something. You know, I haven't read the whole thing, and and I don't really know what's going on. Sort of in the same way that I don't really know what's going on with um, with Sydney's work, but. There are things like the title of the dead souls, you know, mm -hmm. dead souls. Souls are supposed to be immortal, right. but the title is dead souls. Uh, and, you know, what's going on there? And, and dead, uh, the book is, uh, or at least I've been told, it's essentially comic. And, and there's something really funny about uh, a lot of, uh, the pieces in Sydney's show, uh, it, uh, but a similar, uh, or you know, in a, the same way that I can't or I haven't yet been able to get a real grip on uh, on Google, I, I I I don't have a real grip on uh, on Sydney's work, 
but I do, you know, it, it has that complexity that, you know, are these living feature figures or living people are, are they, um, uh, are they alive or dead? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, I, I, I don't know there's, a complexity that really is gripping to me. There's a there's a uh, a certain uh, openness, almost uh, sunny openness in them, and at the same time, as I think about it, uh, and and maybe it's part of the attraction for me is that there there are a number of them that are uh, I'd say abject in some way where the the body is uh you know broken and scattered to some extent or where the pose is you know literally kind of uh kneeling um or you know even begging uh you know there, there there's there yeah so there's this a complexity in in the range um from a from a kind of open embrace of life to uh some kind of expression of being overwhelmed overmastered um you know overcome uh yeah almost defeated but not never completely defeated or yeah. you know never completely abject there's uh yeah. An essential vitality uh, that um, I don't know that is at yeah. work, and it strikes me now that that's been a kind of a perennial mode for me, and I wasn't aware of it um, in the room or or when I looked at the shots earlier this morning. But I think that's at work. I think that's part of my attraction. Um, I mean that piece that happens to be on the screen now that that arms out uh you know it could be something casual, it could be somebody you know uh on the beach on a playing field um you know uh about to em embrace and it's also uh you know kind of cruciform and on one face um seems to have been uh, smoothed out with like the heel of the artist's hands and on the other side almost hammered with uh, thumbprints. So there's a, a fairly stark contrast, you know, 180 degrees from one face to the other. And it's also, it's, it's nearly flat, almost like a, a cookie until you get near the bottom where it thickens up. But all all those things, I think, are really make it visually very um, interesting. Those, uh, you know, contradictory or near contradictory, unexpected juxtapositions of treatment and handling. Yeah, and and what what? Um, how come you? D didn't engage with the the big figures uh that uh to the uh, or i mean you, we were just or you were just talking about that one yeah uh, it, but it was, and everything uh, you said seemed to apply to the big ones uh yeah, yeah i mean that was a, a you know an injustice on my part an injustice to her work i one of them was a bit familiar to me from the the two weeks that we spent in June of last year, um, but she had extensively worked on it since then. It's primarily a matter of me being pulled in on the smaller ones, which were were you know like a, a kind of a crowd of voices, as as I took them. A crowd of sorry voices. Voices. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, really distinct, enthusiastic. Um, you know, kind of. Uh, Insistent 
<clears throat> conversationalists. I mean, I say conversationalists, but there is a certain brevity in the smaller terracotta works. Um, you know, none of them are reworked since they were fired. And it, and it doesn't feel like they were reworked as they got leather hard or you, there's no evidence of more than one campaign uh, in them. They, they seem to have been, you know, knocked into shape in, in what feels like a sitting. So they're really whole that way and, and fresh. But um, in, in terms of development, like that remains to be seen. You know, I think that that might be there in the bigger pieces that that I didn't spend time with. But one's aware that she's a young artist. It's like work that's by it. it it's in its nature that one sees, realizes, and, and uh, you know, knows this work of a younger person. And to some extent, it's, you know, it's about being a younger person. Yeah, about a you know what's better than that? Well, right, right. I about a fresh encounter, um, and I uh, I just to uh, bring Gogol in again. I've got a uh, came across an epigraph from. Uh, Andrei Sinyavsky, and another 20th century uh, writer, um, he, he wrote a book about Gogol, uh, and he, he said, um, art has the provinces in its blood. Art is provincial in spirit, preserving for mm -hmm. itself a naive, external, astonished, and envious outlook. And there's, I, I don't know, that That's uh, resonated, totally. oh. resonated for me with the, the work. And, and uh, you know, we were talking about uh, Raymond Mason uh, a couple of weeks ago. And there's something, uh, something about this work that is sort of consistent with Mason. And with that, uh, uh, that kind of, I want it, or I'm trying, I'm trying to avoid saying naivete, but mm -hmm. it's, um, it's, it's allowed. Yeah. Well, but it, it's, it's kind, or it, it's, it, it's an incomplete uh, uh, description. Uh, but that the provincial is it is is maybe more complete uh, um, and useful. And, and you know, the show was in Astoria. It wasn't in Chelsea or wherever the mm -hmm. sophisticated or um, uh, unprovincial uh, art is shown. It, it's um, uh, we're all provincials. Is it, sorry, we're all provincials. Well, we, we, we are, I, and, and we are at least. Uh, I respond to this in a way that I don't respond to a lot of other work that uh, work that sort of gets headlines these days. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, I want to avoid. Uh, I, I don't really want to discuss the art world, but the. Uh, oh, please don't. Yeah, the dimension, or you know, the big figures are, you know, just <laughs> really start. You know, yeah, the first one you run in ran into as you entered the gallery and as you entered the gallery it was in this sort of awkward place where there was uh very little light uh mm -hmm. and yet i you know that piece is extraordinary uh uh and, and 
I, I, the big pieces, uh, uh, you know, were made over. There were more than uh, four hours of work went into them, uh, more mm -hmm. than just one class. And yet the, she sustained a kind of freshness uh, all the way up, uh, it, you know, uh, she made them in clay, she cast them in plaster, and then she that, painted them. I and, wish I'd looked at the head on that piece that's uh, coming across the screen now, because it, um, seeing it just now, I realized that uh, that that feeling of um, a head having a face and looking back was absent in the smaller pieces. So I'm kind of intrigued with the idea of what does she do with that once she takes it on. Yeah, but it, even in the smaller pieces there, uh, where the heads are just balls, you, I, I don't know, I can feel something in those balls and, and yeah. the, the, they're made up. Each bit of clay is added with i don't know feeling intention yeah um, uh it um uh, well it's 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 just marvelous looking at the the work 